I'm going to continue my video about fake history of Africa. If you feel like you missed something, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I hope you guys can enjoy this video. This is an excerpt from an article titled, How We Solved the Mystery of Libyan Desert Glass, in the Conversation magazine. In the remote desert of western Egypt, near the Libyan border, lie clues to an ancient cosmic cataclysm. Libyan Desert Glass is the name given to fragments of canary yellow glass found scattered over hundreds of kilometers between giant shifting sand dunes. The glass is nearly pure silica, which requires temperatures above 1,600 degrees Celsius to form, and that is hotter than any igneous rock on Earth. But few mineral relics survived from whatever caused the melting. Within the glass are rare occurrences of high-temperature minerals, including a form of quartz called cristobalite. There are also grains of the mineral zircon, although most have reacted to form a higher temperature mineral called zirconia. Ideas about how the glass formed include melting during meteorite impact, or melting caused by an airburst from an asteroid, or other object burning up high in Earth's atmosphere. Despite many studies, definitive proof about which origin is correct has been elusive, until now. The article is a good example of how a false paradigm can blind researchers from asking the right questions. Devices such as directed energy weapons aren't even considered, because as we all know, there was no such technology back then. When will humanity break out of this small box? Search Sahara craters, and you get plenty of samples of possible catastrophic impact. This is craters of Africa in general. Personally, I don't believe most of these are meteorite craters. If the civilization in Africa was indeed destroyed, when did it happen? It could have happened successively, but the main event was in the late 1700s. During this period, the maps changed. Oddly, it's harder to find maps from this period than from the 1500s and 1600s. There is a gap in African history when it comes to the 1700s. Just one example, the history of South Africa on Wikipedia. On this page, we learn that the Dutch colonized South Africa from 1625 to 1820. Before that, the area was inhabited by the Bantu and Khoisan tribes. No mention of a previous civilization is shown in old maps. The Dutch East India Company erected an outpost in South Africa in 1652. The next thing you hear is that there was some kind of war in 1787. What happened in the more than 100 years between that? On the same page, we read that Robert Gordon of the Dutch East India Company was the first European to explore parts of the interior country from 1780 to 1795. This version of history ignores any evidence of earlier civilized interior habitation. From the 1714 book, Atlas Geographus, or a complete system of geography for Africa, we know that the Sahara was still partially fertile as late as the early 1700s. The book references forests, lakes, rivers and ice-capped mountains, in Libya and Egypt. In his book, Extraterrestrial Linguistics, Frederick Dodson showed that African languages such as Xhosa, Zulu, Swahili and Ethiopian, have plenty in common with ancient German. That fact is inexplicable, unless one considers what we've uncovered here. Fortunately, there are old drawings to go along with the old maps. These images of Africa in the 1700s contradict two narratives. 1. The primitive hunter-gatherers narrative, and 2. The Europeans discovered the interior of Africa in the late 18th and 19th century. Bottom left is Mombasa, Kenya. Middle image is Kwilo in Tanzania. Right side is St. George in Ghana. The top image is not in Africa, but fairly close by in Yemen. Rather than wild men hunting game in the wilderness, we see sophisticated architecture, onion-domed cathedrals, walls, arches, ships, towers, similar to medieval Europe. This image is along a river in Mozambique in the 1700s. These images show a civilized Congo with castles, palaces and houses. The background looks like any European town. I put a link in the description, so you can browse through more pictures of the time. They show a number of surprising things, such as black and white people living side by side, also black and white kings. But if Africa really were full of cities hundreds of years ago, wouldn't there be evidence of that? Well, there is. Sometimes that evidence is out in the open, such as here in Gondor, Ethiopia. But most often it is buried deep underground, waiting to be dug out. This entire very big city for example, called Thamugadi, was buried in the mountains of the Algerian desert. 
For the longest time, it was invisible, merely rumored to be there. According to Wikipedia, Timgid, modern word for Thumajid, are Roman ruins of a city built in 100 CE. In Framoro's map, it is visible, and not buried, some distance south of the riding Numidia, which is the old name of Algeria, beside the mountains in red. Even an arched gate is shown, just like the one that was excavated. A nearby city is called Capsa, which is the old name for the Tunisian town Gafsa. Here's a Google map of both. It is indicated on other old maps of Numidia as well, this one from 1855, 30 years before the French began excavating the site. Apart from buried cities, there is also evidence of molten structures, as shown in previous videos. This one is in Sudan, not far from the Nubian pyramids. This particular image is especially important, because it's obvious that this was previously part of a larger building complex. What happens could be hot enough to melt stone. Perhaps the same weapons responsible for the Libyan desert glass. This video merely scratches the surface. From what I've seen, it would be, again, fairly easy to go from region to region and uncover hundreds of historical anomalies. But they are only anomalies because our current understanding of history is false. As elsewhere in the world, signs of disastrous civilization-destroying events have been covered up and replaced with the fake narrative of recent European discovery and conquest. By now, I realize the world underwent a massive shift between the 1600s and 1800s. Whoever took over from the previous empire rewrote history to suit their own agenda. The ease with which evidence has fallen into my lap surprises me. There is no need for me to cherry-pick or bend truths. Maps, paintings and buildings speak for themselves. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this article far and wide. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.